This video is about polynomials and their graphs. Recall that a polynomial is a function like this one, for example, whose terms are numbers times powers of x. I'll start with some definitions. The degree of a polynomial is the largest exponent. For example, for this polynomial, the degree is 4. The leading term is the term with the largest exponent. In the same example, the leading term is 5x to the fourth. It's conventional to write the polynomial in descending order of powers of x, so that the leading term is first. But the leading term doesn't have to be the first term. If I wrote this same polynomial as y equals, say, 2 minus 17x minus 21x cubed plus 5x fourth, the leading term would still be the 5x to the fourth, even though it was last. The leading coefficient is the number in the leading term. In this example, the leading coefficient is 5. Finally, the constant term is the term with no x's in it. In our same example, the constant term is 2. Please pause the video for a moment and take a look at this next example of polynomial. Figure out what's the degree, the leading term, the leading coefficient, and the constant term. The degree is again 4, since that's the highest power we have. And the leading term is negative 7x to the fourth. The leading coefficient is negative 7, and the constant term is 18. In the graph of the polynomial shown here, the three marked points are called turning points because the polynomial turns around and changes direction at those three points. Those same points can also be called local extreme points, or they can be called local maximum and minimum points. For this polynomial, the degree is 4, and the number of turning points is 3. Let's compare the degree and the number of turning points for these next three examples. For the first one, the degree is 2, and there's one turning point. For the second example, the degree is 3, and there's two turning points. And for this last example, the degree is 4, and there's one turning point. For this first example and the next two, the number of turning points is exactly one less than the degree. So you might conjecture that this is always true. But in fact, this is not always true. In this last example, the degree is 4, but the number of turning points is 1, not 3. In fact, it turns out that while the number of turning points is not always equal to the degree minus 1, it is always less than or equal to the degree minus 1. That's a useful fact to remember when you're sketching graphs or recognizing graphs of polynomials. The end behavior of a function is how the ends of the function look as x gets bigger and bigger, heads towards infinity, or x gets, goes through larger and larger negative numbers towards negative infinity. In this first example, the graph of the function goes down as x gets towards infinity and as x goes towards negative infinity. I can draw this with two little arrows pointing down on either side, or I can say in words, that the function is falling as we head left and falling also as we head right. In this second example, the graph rises to the left and rises to the right. In the third example, the graph falls to the left but rises to the right. And in the fourth example, it rises to the left and falls to the right. If you study these examples and others, you might notice there's a relationship between the degree of the polynomial, the leading coefficients of the polynomials, and the end behavior. Specifically, these four types of end behavior are determined by whether the degree is even or odd, and by whether the leading coefficient is positive or negative. When the degree is even and the leading coefficient is positive, like in this example where the leading coefficient is 1, we have this sorts of end behavior rising on both sides. 
when the degree is even and the leading coefficient is negative, like in this example, we have the end behavior that's falling on both bent sides. When the degree is odd and the leading coefficient is positive, that's like this example with a degree 3 and a leading coefficient 3, then we have this sort of end behavior. And finally, when the degree is odd and the leading coefficient is negative, like in this example, we have this sort of end behavior. I like to remember this chart just by thinking of the most simple examples. y equals x squared, y equals negative x squared, y equals x cubed, and y equals negative x cubed, because I know by heart what those four examples look like. Then I just have to remember that any polynomial with an even degree and positive leading coefficient has the same end behavior as x squared. And similarly, any polynomial with even degree and negative leading coefficient has the same end behavior as negative x squared, and similar statements for x cubed and negative x cubed. We can use facts about turning points and end behavior to say something about the equation of a polynomial just by looking at its graph. In this example, because of the end behavior, we know that the degree is odd. We know that the leading coefficient must be positive. And finally, since there are one, two, three, four turning points, we know that the degree is greater than or equal to 5. That's because the number of turning points is less than or equal to the degree minus 1. And in this case, the number of turning points we said was 4. And so solving that inequality, we get the degree is bigger than or equal to 5. Putting some of that information together, we see that the degree could be 5 or 7 or 9 or any odd number greater than or equal to 5. But it couldn't be, for example, 3 or 6 because even numbers and, and also numbers less than 5 are, are right out. This video gave a lot of definitions, including the definition of degree, leading coefficients, turning points, and end behavior. We saw that knowing the degree and the leading coefficient can help you make predictions about the number of turning points and the end behavior, as well as vice versa.